Hey guys, welcome back to another lecture video for Chem 104. In this lecture video, we are going to learn how to name simple ethers or ethers that are not branched. You guys are also going to learn how to go from the name of a simple ether to its skeletal structure. So we're going to draw it out. Now to name ethers, um, what you want to do is you want to name both alkyl groups that's bonded on the left and right side of the oxygen atom. And then you guys are going to arrange these alphabetically and then add the word ether to the very end. So it's a lot more simple than, uh, for example, namings of alcohols with, with double bonds or alcohols with triple bonds um, and all of that stuff or alkenes or alkenes with substituents and the list continues. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go through both of these uh, examples just to demonstrate how to name these simple ethers. And so I know that I have an ether because I see a carbon single bonded to a hydrogen and once again single bonded to another carbon so that oxygen is wedged right in between two carbons. And so to name this ether, I'm going to go ahead and just describe this alkyl group. And, a, and so a CH3 is a methyl group. Whereas here I have one, two carbon, so a two carbon substituent is going to be an ethyl. So now that I've named my alkyl groups, so that kind of checks off the first, uh, the, the first bullet point, we're going to go ahead and arrange them in alphabetical order. And so in this case, E comes before M. And so we're going to merely say ethyl, then methyl, and then last but not least, we're going to add the word ether. Um, and so that, that's pretty much it. Um, it's, it's not very complicated. Here we have ethyl methyl ether. The one thing that I do want you guys to note is that there is an actual space between these words. Um, it's no, so it's not one word, it's, it's three words. The reason why it's three words is because there's really no specified parent chain. Um, we're not trying to find the longest chain in the system. Um, we're simply looking at the oxygen as our reference point. So that's going to be our ether, so to speak. And then we're going to go ahead and just describe uh, the alkyl groups that's on the left of that oxygen and the alkyl groups that's on the right. And then we're going to arrange them in alphabetical order and we're going to add ether at the very end. So there's really no specific parent chain. Um, and because there's no parent chain, uh, we don't have to like number the substituents and all of that stuff. So basically there's just going to be a space between each of those words. And so this um, example just demonstrates um, an ether that has different alkyl groups. And so how would we name an ether that has similar alkyl groups. Okay, so let's go ahead and check that out. And so here I see one, two carbons. And so if I have a two carbon um, uh, substituent generally, right, a two carbon alkyl group, this is known as an ethyl. And once again, here I have one, two, so a two carbon um, uh, chain or a substituent in this case, an alkyl group, it's going to also be an ethyl. So very similar to the previous lecture videos in which we went over the naming of those organic compounds, we're going to go ahead and combine both of these together and say diethyl. So we're not going to say ethyl ethyl ether, which just kind of sounds weird. And so we're going to 
go ahead and combine them and tell the reader that there's two of them. So it's diethyl and then put a space and then end the name with the word ether and you're done. Um, so it's pretty simple. It's nothing too complicated. Uh, we're going to go ahead and skip this part for now. I'm going to continue uh, naming these compounds before we draw them. And so let's go ahead and, and take a look at this uh, condensed structure here. And so when I look at this structure, I see a whole bunch of carbons, but there's an oxygen right in the middle. And so this idea of a COC is indicative of my functional group ether. And so looking to the left of the oxygen, I count one, two, three carbons. And so if you guys have a three carbon chain, then that's going to be propyl. Okay. Well, technically a three carbon chain is prop, and you add the YL to represent that it's and, uh, a substituent. Um, and so this is a, a three carbon alkyl group. So looking on the right hand side of this oxygen, I have one, two, three, four carbons. And so if I have a four carbon alkyl group, I'm going to use the prefix but. And then I'm going to add the YL to represent that it's going to be an attachment or substituent, if you will. It's not like butane, where butane is an actual four carbon molecule by itself with nothing else. Okay. And so this YL just serves as a reminder. Um, it serves to communicate to both the, the, the reader and the, the speaker that those carbons are um, attachments to other organic compounds. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, and put this together. So B comes before P. And so my final answer is going to be butyl, propyl, ether. And so there is going to be a space for in between all three of these words. And so this one we um, already did, so I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. So let's go ahead and look at this example. Um, here I see a carbon, oxygen, carbon. So I know I'm working with an ether. Um, and so all I have to do is describe everything to the left of the oxygen, oops. And so anything, everything to the left of the oxygen, here I just have a one carbon compound. And so one carbon um, attachment is going to be a methyl. Now if I look to the right of the oxygen, I have one, two, three, four. So I have a four carbon compound, but it's arranged in a way where it's kind of symmetrical. And it kind of looks like a T, if you will. Um, and so since this is a four carbon compound, I know that it has to do something with but or butyl. And so it, since it looks like a T almost, I'm going to say that this is tert butyl. And so the name tert butyl innately has a dash. Um, and so you want to keep that dash. Okay. Um, and so since the left, the, the, the right hand side, this area right here, is a tert butyl, the T is going to come after the M. And so to name this compound, we're going to say methyl, tert butyl, ether. And we're done. All right. And so um, we've kind of taken a look at how to name um, organic compounds by um, through the perspective of 
the condensed structure. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at how these ethers look like when they're um, in, in a skeletal structure. And so if, I'm, if I was doing this on my own, um, I recognize that, hey, this is a carbon, this is an oxygen, and this is also a carbon. So I have this COC. And so this whole area is going to represent an ether. And once I've recognized that the main functional group is an ether, I'm going to go ahead and uh, name it so. Well, on the left-hand side, here I have um, a methyl group, so left of the oxygen, just to clarify. Right of the, of the oxygen, I have one, two, three, four carbons. And so since I have four carbons, then this is going to be butte. And it's a straight chain, so it's not like a tert butyl or anything like that, or a sec butyl. Um, it's just simply butyl. And so to name this, um, this organic compound, I'm going to uh, list them alphabetically. So B comes before M. So it's going to be butyl, methyl, ether. And so looking at our next example, once again, this is carbon, oxygen, carbon. And so this is going to be my ether. Once I recognize that, I'm going to look to the left of the ether. And you don't have to go, you don't have to look at the left of the ether, ether first. If you want to look to the right of the ether, you can. Um, and so for me, I just read from left to right. So I'm just used to seeing it that way. So here I have a 1,2 carbon um, compound. So this is an ethyl. And so if I circle this portion right here, I have 1, 2, 3 carbons. So since I have 3 carbons, this area is going to call, be called propyl. And so I'm just going to name this um, alphabetically. So E comes before P and then it's followed by ether. So this is going to be ethyl, propyl, ether. All right, so looking at the next example, um, once again, I recognize I have a carbon, oxygen, carbon. And so this whole area right here is going to represent my ether. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and name everything. Uh, I'm going to name my alkyl group that's left of the ether. And that's going to be uh, 1, 2, 3 carbon. So I know I have prop somewhere in there, right? So 3 carbon alkyl group is going to have prop. Now, if I were to look at this point directly, it's kind of symmetrical, right? So um, if I were to fold this molecule along this dotted line and along the arrow, I can, I can kind of fold and those two pieces, those two carbons, this guy and this guy, is going to kind of overlap. And so there's symmetry here. Um, and that's going to lead me to think of my three carbon substituent that is symmetrical, the name of that would be isopropyl. So let's go ahead and look at this sub, um, alkyl group to the right of the oxygen. So I have one, two, three carbons. So I know that I have prop somewhere in the name. And looking at the looking at these three carbons, notice that it's just a straight chain. Um, it's there's nothing fancy to it, and so I'm just going to go ahead and describe it as a propyl group. 
And so finally, you guys are just going to organize this. Um, you guys are going to list it alphabetically. So this is going to be isopropyl. Propyl ether. Okay, and we're done. So um, the last example here, uh, once again, I recognize that I have a carbon, oxygen carbon. So I have my ether. Um, everything to the left of the oxygen is going to be the alkyl group, and that's one, two, three carbons. And so that the arrangement of those three carbons, there's nothing fancy, it's just a straight chain. So this is going to be a propyl. Now if I look to the right of that oxygen, I have one, two, three carbons, and that's going to be another propyl. And so I'm gonna go ahead and combine both of these two and represent it as dipropyl. And the last thing that I'm going to write is the name of the functional group, which is ether. So the name of this substance, this organic compound, is going to be dipropyl ether. So hopefully going through these examples, um, you guys are able to uh, understand how to tackle um, naming these types of organic compounds. All right, and so before I end this lecture video, um, I want to go ahead and, and uh, uh, be able to draw the compound based on the name of the, the ether. And so here I have a cyclopropyl ethyl ether. Um, and so since I know I have an ether, I have a carbon, oxygen, carbon. Or if I want to do it in terms of the skeletal structure, I simply have this for now. Okay. And now it really doesn't matter which side you guys put the, cycle, the cyclopropyl or the ethyl. Um, left or right, it, it wouldn't matter because you can always rotate it 180 degrees and you'd get the same thing. And so for the first one, um, it's going to be a cyclopropyl. So I'm going to draw a cyclic ring. So cyclo means that it's in a ring form. Prope means that there's three carbons. And so from this point, so this is going to be carbon one, I have to draw a ring that has only three carbons. Well, there's only one way to do that, which is a triangle. Okay. Now you guys can go ahead and it doesn't, this, this uh, cyclopropyl doesn't have to go down, it can go up. Um, and so in other words, you can have a cyclopropyl that looks like this, and it's still the same thing, right? Uh, remember that this is a single bond, and single bonds are, you know, like rotatable 360 degrees, so they can kind of like articulate in, in many different forms when you guys are talking about it in three dimensions. So the next alkyl group is an ethyl. So this ethyl is a two carbon compound. So the moment that you uh, drew this line, this end is also is, is a carbon, so that's one carbon. And so since I want a two carbon compound, I'm just going to go ahead and draw another line, and the end of this line is the second carbon. And so to kind of clean up my work, I simply have this triangle that's connected to an oxygen that's connected to an ethyl group. Now, if you guys want to draw in the lone pairs, you can. Um, uh, you don't have to, but you know, if, if you don't, then you just need to keep in mind that the oxygen has those lone pairs, but it's just not drawn in. It just remains invisible. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and, and do the next one. Here we have a cyclobutyl ether. 
or cyclobutyl methyl ether. And so once again, I know that since I have an ether, my starting point is going to be like a, a COC, right? Or you can translate this into a skeletal structure automatically. And I'll go ahead and just do that by erasing my carbons. And so this little point right here that I've just made represents the carbons. Um, all right, so since cyclobutyl is the first alkyl group that I see, just to demonstrate that you can put this cyclobutyl to the left or the right, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the right of the oxygen. Um, and so the moment you put down the carbon, that's carbon one. And so since I have a cyclo, this is telling me that I have a ring, and butyl means I have a four carbon ring. So if this is carbon one, then this can be carbon two, carbon three, carbon four. Okay. So this is a cyclobutyl. Um, and then on the other side of that ether, that oxygen, it's going to be the methyl group. Well, if you look, I already have one carbon, and so I don't need to add any more. Um, everything that's not shown, remember, is a hydrogen, um, and there's going to be as many invisible hydrogens as needed so that those carbons will be able to reach its octet. So since this carbon only has one single bond, it has three invisible hydrogens. So to clean up my work, I'm just going to go ahead and draw a structure that looks like this. Maybe I need, just need to draw it just a little bit better. So when you guys are drawing this um, cyclobutyl uh, group, um, try not to be tempted to go like this. Um, because that, that, that's going to represent that there's another carbon here and another carbon here. And so you, one of the vertices in that square, if you will, is going to serve as one of the carbons that will link it to the oxygen. All right, so the last um, item here is going to be dipropyl ether. And so once again, since we have an ether, we're going to go ahead and uh, write in this um, skeletal structure. And this time we have a dipropyl. So there's two uh, three carbon alkyl groups. So prop means three carbon chain, and we have two of them. Both of them are going to go on either side of the oxygen. So this is carbon one, two, three. One, two, three. So if I clean that up so that I don't, I don't uh, put in my dots, I simply just have this. Okay. And that would be my final structure. Once again, the, the lone pairs, if you guys want to put them in, you guys can. Um, I'm not going to be picky on your exam about those lone pairs, just as long as you know that they exist. All right. So that's pretty much it for this lecture video. Um, pretty straightforward and simple compared to a lot of the other stuff that we discussed in um, prior lecture videos and prior chapters. All right, so the next functional group that I will discuss is thiols. I'll see you in a bit.